Hello everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful day, evening, night, or whenever, you, whenever you're watching this, alright? My name is Wunda, and today I'll be showing you how to track any kind of object in Premiere Pro. Now, if you don't know what tracking is, it's a pretty, pretty useful skill that you can have in practically any kind of editing. It just allows you to, you know, align with certain objects that are moving, or have text tracking with it, just staying with it so you can label something. It just generally makes the video look a lot better, because you can keep the focus on whatever you want, or label whatever kind of thing you want, as it's moving away as it's moving out of focus it looks excellent on everything it's pretty easy it takes a little bit of time but overall it's just an excellent skill to have and uh, yeah that's pretty much it for tracking let's just jump in how to actually do it now the first thing you've got to do is you got to find which part of the video you actually want to track so let's just look at what clip I have today it's actually from a CSGO video that I was gonna post before but I thought I wasn't funny enough so uh, yeah this is one of the end scenes that I was gonna actually track the cursor so let me just show you what it looks like before you know what? I'm done with CSGO. I'm done. I'm done. Boop. Boop. It deleted. Never happened. I'm never playing CSGO again. Goodbye. As you can see, grade A comedy for me. I'm a hilarious guy. Don't have to tell me. Actually, do tell me. My self-esteem could use it. So, uh, what we're actually going to be tracking today is the cursor, because if you haven't seen this a lot, it's in all types of gaming videos. A lot of people, when they get angry or something, they just track the cursor as it's moving over the icon or whatever it is and they're deleting it. So that's what we're gonna do today. It's a pretty simple, it's a pretty simple thing that we're gonna be trying to do, but you can apply it to anything. You can apply it to text. You can apply it to any kind of object that's moving. It has all the same steps. So first things first, you're gonna have to find, you're gonna have to find the point where you wanna begin tracking and where you're gonna wanna end tracking. So let's see where that is gonna be for us. You know what? I'm done with CSGO, I'm done. So I think the beginning should be here when it just starts moving. CSGO, I'm done, I'm done. Boop, boop. And I think the end should be when it's actually, you know, deleted and practically the movement is done. Now once you have your little portion that you want to edit and you want to track, just click on it so you can see all the effect controls of it. And uh, this is where the actual fun stuff happens. It's not really fun, but uh, you know, where the actual magic happens. So first things first, you're going to want to click toggle animation for scale and position. You don't essentially have to do it for scale in all situations, but we're going to do it anyway just so you can see how the scale zooms in and zooms out. It's not just a static, it just zooms in instantly and zooms out. So what we're going to do is we're also going to toggle uh, position for position because obviously we're going to want to track the screen as it's moving. Now if you didn't know, this is your little panel for the timeline of the actual edit that you're about to do. And these are keyframes. Now keyframes are practically just, uh, you know, freeze frames of where you want your you know, position to be and your scale to be. So if I put a freeze frame for 960 times 540, which is not my screen resolution, but what the video is assuming is my screen resolution, then it's going to be at the standard screen resolution. If I move it over a little bit, then I can also set a keyframe for that by uh, moving a little bit left. And you see a new one is created. So now if we watch that back, oh, I'm done, I'm done. It's going to see that it moves a little bit. We can delete those because they're obviously just for example, but you see as this is standard screen, we're going to keep it like this and we're going to add two keyframes for that because that's what a standard looks like. That's at the beginning of the zoom in. Now we're going to want to start zooming in. So I reckon here is where we should fully zoom in and so we can actually start tracking. So to zoom in, it's pretty easy. You can just double click on this or you and use the little blue boxes or you can use the scale thing. It's probably better because it's more accurate or you can type in that, but uh, generally you can just uh, do that. And to move the position, you can just drag. That's probably the easiest way. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to work. Now it's done it. So that's how you drag. You can also use the position things, but these are kind of sometimes annoying to use. But that's how you do that. Now, you, as you can see, there's two new keyframes here. So if we just move it back, just go, I'm done. We can see they moved in. And now this is kind of the more tedious but simple part. You kind of just got to move a little bit uh, to the right with this little uh, spearhead cursor thing, whatever you want to call it, and then just kind of track it. Then move a little bit more and just track it a little bit more. Then move a little bit more and track it a bit more until you have tracked it too. Wait, little side note, 
Sometimes when your cursor or your object is a little bit closer to the edge of the screen, it's going to have this little bit of a black void where your video actually isn't. A lot of times I like to just keep it as the wall, like it doesn't move past there because a lot of times I just don't like the look of the black outside in the video. It kind of makes it look a little bit, uh, I don't know how to say it, stupid? No, stupid's not the word. I'm, I'm stupid for saying that. I just don't like the void of my video to be in my video. But uh, for this example, we're actually just going to keep it in just because it's easier to show off and yeah, it's just easier to animate instead of just having it as the wall. But I personally highly recommend that you actually don't have this black void in your video. If it's close to the wall, just keep it at the edge. But you know, who am I to tell? I have 13 subscribers. I can't, I don't, I can't give advice to anybody about anything. Now we continue till we're done. Now here's a little bit of an extra edit that you could do. I like doing this a lot. It makes the video look a little bit more higher quality. That's why we actually click the toggle animation thing. Uh, when you click delete, a lot of times it kind of looks a little bit nice to like make it zoom in a little bit, zoom out a little bit just to show the effect, the impact of actually clicking. So that's what we're going to do. We're actually going to have this zoomed in a little bit. But actually, right before that, we're going to have it... Uh, we're gonna add a keyframe just so it's not slowly zooming in the entire entirety of this little space between the scale keyframes. Gonna zoom in a little bit. Gonna copy that one from before. Gonna paste it right back here. Keep it like that. And we're gonna keep going as we begin to fly back. And here since we're near the end, we're gonna actually start zooming out, so I'm gonna just have the scales locked like this and then have it at the end and uh, click these to reset it to the original parameters so that's what this is so we just sent it back and uh, let's see how it looks pro premiere pro tip what pro premiere pro tip you can actually just render any little part of your video that might be a little bit laggy because the extra editing by clicking I at the beginning of it and O, it actually renders it so it might take a little bit of a while especially if it's a, you know a heavier edit so that's why you got to do it to smaller pieces so that's what I'm gonna do just so it can see it in its full quality this is actually a 60 FPS video so it should be pretty smooth to see so let's just see how it looks I'm done you know what? I'm done with CSGO I'm done I'm done boop boop it deleted never happened I'm never playing CSGO again goodbye now, as you can see, my comedic genius is accentuated by that incredible edit that we just did. Now, this is pretty simple. It's not an incredible edit, guys, but what you can do with this skill is incredible. You can make any kind of video look incredible. You can make anything just look more, a lot more interesting. You know, if you don't know Soviet Womble, he's one of the more popular gaming YouTubers. He uses this a lot. He uses a lot of tracking in Premiere Pro, and it just looks excellent. You can do it in any kind of situation. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much how you do it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to comment if you're confused about anything at all. You know, I know this is a little bit of a weird way to explain it just because it's a little bit harder to explain simpler things in Premiere Pro that uh, branch out to more complex ideas. But um, if you have any questions or suggestions, don't forget to leave them in the comments. If you found this video informative or if you liked the video, don't forget to like. If you like me, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time, hopefully. I don't know. P please subscribe. That would allow you to see me next time so yeah yeah peace thank you guys